Good evening and welcome to Top Water Live, episode four of our weekly Tuesday night podcast where we discuss all things fishing related. I am Mike Anderson alongside my co-host Kyle Van Leuven, intern Grant behind the monitor tonight as usual, and our special guest Mr. Cody Hart joins us tonight. Tonight we take a look at our roles as tournament directors. Uh, we look at the lake release of the Huron Division, the first four lakes to be released out of that league division, as well as lakes five through eight of the Roots Division being released tonight. Uh, we take a conversation with Cody Hart and uh, take a weekly last call segment. Uh, and stay tuned and we'll be right back after these messages. It doesn't matter what you fish. You need the right bait. Berkeley Power Bait. Now in 54 proven shapes. From crawls and creatures to worms, grubs, swim baits, and more. And 85 sizes. And all are infused with that deadly power bait flavor. Fish bite and won't let go. Giving you up to 18 times longer to set the hook. And that means you catch more fish. Yeah, it's time for a bigger tackle box. Berkeley. Catch more fish. All right, we are back. I am Kyle Van Leuven here, of course, with Mike Anderson and our guest Cody Hart tonight. Welcome, guys. Hey, hey how's here. it going? Going good. All right, so tonight, let's jump right into it. We are talking Grand River Tournament. Uh, we all just got off of the Grand River for a Sunday tournament. Um, you're kind of looking at the, the table of losers sitting here. <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> Not none, of, close. none of us uh, really came up with a good result in that one. <laughs> that was some very difficult fishing on Sunday. The Absolutely. wind was blowing incredibly hard. It was super choppy on the river. I know a bunch of people went to the lakes and the bayous, but I stuck it out on the river, and uh, it was uh, miserable till about 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, it was pretty bad. I remember uh, basically started out, I'm just hitting big old waves, breaking up, and I was like, oh, it's not going to rain. I don't need to wear my rain suit. And so I just wore regular fishing pants, which are a little bit water repellent, but it's not a rain suit. And I was just getting drenched from water spraying up from the waves and the crazy wind. Uh, it was it was pretty ridiculous. And then Mike sends me a FaceTime, and uh, he's like holding on to a dock so he doesn't float down the river. <laughs> it was hard. Like, even trying to pedal upstream to get where I wanted to go, I was just making no traction. I was going nowhere quick. And as soon as you let off the gas, you're 30 yards back. It was, right. That drift was crazy. Now, obviously, Mike and I did not have a good day, but Cody over here messages me <laughs> a couple days, and uh, he does like, you know, the, the you know Babe Ruth here calling his shot, says he is going to win this thing, and how did it work out for you? <laughs> yeah, uh, not so good as it turns out, actually. Uh, they ran a boat tournament the day before, on the area that I was going to fish for that tournament and I think it kind of shut everything down for me so where'd you fish at uh, out of Stearns by you Stearns yep. yeah unfortunately <laughs> <laughs> I don't there think wasn't a whole lot of anything being caught there so. yeah I, I fished where the where the guy that won it uh, won and I could see him the whole time but he obviously had the the right connection or the right uh, tips for that one because it certainly wasn't working for me I actually started out uh, first thing I kind of made my way around and there's a point coming south and I came around this point and the wind was just blasting me like crazy so I go around the point and find a little spot that I can kind of anchor up and, and not be completely blown away and within 15 minutes of pulling a 16 inch bass you know um, actually it was a drop or drop shit as Pyatt says on a uh, one of the new Berkeley uh, <clears throat> Uh, Berkeley paddle tails, but uh, power swimmers, I believe, is what they call them. So I'm throwing that underneath there and 16 inch bass, 20 minutes in, and I'm thinking, all right, I've got this because I'm going to get killed by wind all day, but I'm in that spot where it's like I sit there, I take the punishment, but I'm going to win this tournament. And I sat there for another hour just getting rocked by wind and nothing else. I went and fished all of Smith's Bayou, did not have any luck in there. I took the Tom Mullins tip, which I feel like half of us get a Tom Mullins tip. That you... <laughs> I, I feel like Tom Mullins, what he does is just comes with the ideas and then gives them to different people. Let's see how it works out. <laughs> then Same whoever wins, the water. it's like he uses us to practice. <laughs> right. He, He's got 14 guinea pigs out on the river. He's like, Kyle, I am telling you they are killing it in Smith's Bayou. So I'm over in Smith's Bayou. I don't catch anything. He goes, all right, Smith's Bayou is off the list. <laughs> yeah. Mike. Meanwhile, he told Mike to head down to the Grand Isle Marina and cast the docks. You might die in that river, but there's definitely fish there. <laughs> 
That's funny. So how did the Good tournament? Tom. Now, how did Tom's the... information is uh, usually pretty pretty reliable. He's a great source of information. So if it's a hit, it's definitely a hit. If it's a miss, <laughs> you almost drowned. <laughs> You get attacked by a crazy lady with a pontoon or something like that. Uh, that's later. That's later. <laughs> that's later. No, and I. Uh, I have Tom. A, Tom. Tom is commenting in and saying he sends everyone to that by you. <laughs> <laughs> that's his plan. <laughs> <laughs> I had a miserable uh, morning out there. I, I thought I had a game plan. I had done homework after homework uh, assignments. I had done my research. I'd only fished the grand. Twice in my life, uh, both early earlier events in the summer, so it was bright and sunny and beautiful those days. Uh, Sunday, total opposite. I'd never been to this area before. I actually launched out launched out of East Grand Park, and my plan was to launch from that little park, shoot right across the river into those islands, get on the backside with the western wind coming in. And honestly, I couldn't even make it across the river without fear of getting flipped over. So yeah, I found some docks right outside of the launch and just hung out there. I spilt my coffee. It was the only thing I took out to drink with me. I was bummed. And uh, eventually it did calm down a little bit, like 10, 1030-ish, and I was able to make my way farther west uh, and get over out in front of Grand Isle Marina where I wanted to be with all the woody structure and then of course the 750 docks over there. Uh, and it was still, you know, 18, 20 feet deep right out there. So I, I thought, you know, fish, it's cold. It was about 47 degree water temperature where I was at. So thinking they may be sitting in those 20 foot pockets out there. No, I threw everything at them. I jerk baits, chatter baits, you know, cranks. Uh, I was throwing crawls on the on the bottom, I, whatever I could, you know, tie on in that wind. I was trying, and it just wasn't happening for me. It's a bad spot. Don Roth is saying that your uh, pre fishing was on Xbox. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I wish I would have stayed home and played Xbox on Sunday. Yeah, you play that game on Xbox, and it's like ten pounders all day long, <laughs> all day. <laughs> That's how I build my confidence: is I play that game, and then I go out and fish. It's painful to go back to the real world after that. Though. <laughs> yeah. how, how long? How long does the Xbox confidence hold out? Not very long <laughs> on Sunday. I spilled that coffee within like ten minutes of being on the water, and I was pretty bummed. <laughs> At least you didn't get shot by a duck hunter, so. That's true. I saw H. <laughs> you, you want to stay away from those little islands right out in front of that park. That's duck hunter heaven. So apparently, they were having a great day out on the water. He was telling me about duck hunters, and I made the joke. I said, I'm glad you didn't have one of those little live target ducks on and try to cast <laughs> that up, and then just boom. That's <laughs> gone. Yeah, they were everywhere out there on those island points. What about you, Cody? How did the Grand River teach you? Well, it uh, started the day before there. We had a real bad pre-fishing day, me and buddy Chad there. And so uh, doing some research, trying to figure out something different that I hadn't been throwing. I was like, you know what? This Alabama rig sounds pretty interesting. You know, it's expensive, but I'm gonna put one together. So about $40 later, I get one together and get out to the river. I'm all excited. First cast, snap my line, <laughs> drop $40 straight to the bottom of the Grand River. And yeah, I should have just packed it up at that point, but I didn't. You know, I kept with it, and it it didn't do anything for me. So I feel yeah. like all of our days started pretty bad because I, I forgot after before all this happened, I start rolling out. And I'm like, all right, it's tournament day. I felt good about it. I'm going. I leave Petty's Bayou. There's a bridge right there. Start going right underneath the bridge, and then boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Look back. I forgot to put my uh, anchor uh, anchor pole down. <laughs> So I'm watching that smoke the top of the bridge. Before I can react, it breaks the Hobie mount, flips completely upside down. So I'm like sitting underneath the bridge trying to pull all my, you know, anchor. That, that isn't an expensive yeah. issue. Fortunately, it all worked out. I didn't lose anything except for the stupid mount, but <laughs> oh, it was entertaining to say the least. <laughs> Probably the cheapest part to lose. So yeah. yeah, yeah, the mount was definitely the cheapest part. The funny thing is though, I'm getting there. I'm like, all right, this is one of those things that you face as, as a kayak fisherman. It's the, you know, the adversity you are just getting, you know, this stuff happens. You got to pull it back together. So I had a positive attitude. I got it all fixed, jumped back on the water and it didn't work. <laughs> Should have just went home. <laughs> Matt, Matt Pyatt chiming in saying he told me where to go. That, that's another one of those Tom type scenarios where you don't know whether to believe that Intel or not. Yeah. Whether Matt's going to send me, you know, on some wild goose chase or if he's actually trying to help me, you know, find some fish. So, <laughs> uh-oh. Saying we have a lost connection. Lost connection. Uh-oh. Intern Grant, what's going on back there? 
Final bet over here. Yeah, we froze up. Not blinking red. Right. Yes. Uh, let's hold on. Let's see if it comes back or not. Let's see if it starts moving again. I feel like I need to get a laptop and put it in front of me. It doesn't have to be on. There's like seven of them over there. It says live now. <coughs> All right. Shouldn't have talked bad about Matt Pyatt. Zach. Take it all well, back, shows Matt. me sitting back down, so Zach. I think we're live again. It's that karma. You guys out there hear us? Looks like we're having some trouble, so let me know if you guys can hear us okay. All right, we are back. I've got the confirmation from Jeff. So sorry about that. Don't know what happened there, but yeah. apparently we are good to go again. <clears throat> All yeah. right. You, so. YouTube was good. I uh, just lost a Facebook connection, so not really sure what happened there, but good to know we're back. So. And while we're bringing up that note, just to let you guys know, we are broadcasting on YouTube as well. So I'm going to go ahead and post the link there now. Uh, if uh, something happens that... Uh, you have trouble here or we keep having trouble jump over there um, but this is where we're going to be doing all the prizes so hopefully everything works works good from here so we're going to go ahead and take a quick uh, break to show our sponsor berkeley and give a little information on that and then we will be right back with our matt uh matt Pye was last week <laughs> with our cody hart interview thank you back and thank you for taking the time to watch our sponsor message again the topwater series brought to you each week by berkeley and uh, if you get a chance check out some berkeley products show them some love jump on their facebook and uh, social media networks uh, give them a like and uh, see what is new in berkeley uh, always putting out new new gadgets new hardware new innovative products so show them some love and uh, at this time uh, welcome cody hart Thanks for stopping in tonight. Yeah, glad to be here. Yeah. So we talked a little bit about your Grand River experience this past week. Yeah. Uh, but let's go back uh, even further and talk about the 2019 Topwater Series. Uh, congratulations on your national championship qualification. Thank you. Thank it you. came down to the wire, didn't it? It did. I was uh, very concerned going into, I don't know, week nine or ten. I texted Kyle and I was like, man, I feel like I'm always just right on the verge of being qualified. I just, I can't get over that. And he texted me back. He's like, what are you talking about? You're already qualified. Like you can't possibly not qualify for national championship. I'm like, oh, well that takes a huge load off my mind. You know, <laughs> now I can just kind of kick back, have fun and fish. You know, it was, it was a good time. Very good year. That's awesome. What was uh, your favorite experience about the Top Water Series? Um, probably just getting to know everybody. It was a really, really good group of guys that we had, guys and ladies that we had this year. Um, just everybody very laid back, very friendly. You know, it was just 
you just rolling in fishing with your buddies. Yeah, so. that's that's honestly my favorite part of the Topwater Series. And I know we've talked about this uh, in the last couple podcasts, is that the Topwater Series uh, truly provides that friendly camaraderie oh, uh, amongst fellow anglers um, where no one is so diehard that they're out there taking it so serious. Everybody's willing to chit chat and uh, hang out, you know, on the water afterwards uh, as well, and get to know each other uh, and help each other. And that's honestly been my favorite part of the Top Water Series. Yeah, it's it's enough competition to where everybody is out there really trying, but not to the point where they're wanting to sink your kayak. The yeah, other head. yeah, you know, absolutely. It's, it's a really good environment to be in. So, well, I'm glad you had a ton of fun this year. Again, congratulations on your national uh, championship. Uh, qualification how much are you looking forward to getting down to Alabama this spring uh, well you can ask my wife it's 95% of what I talk about <laughs> uh, she is very sick of hearing about Gunnersville and everything that I have to do and purchase for Gunnersville <laughs> yeah. but you know I'm um, just really excited looking forward to it been doing a bunch of research looking at different lakes or different areas on the lake and that's what I was gonna ask is uh, what kind of research or homework have you done uh, as far as uh, preparing yourself to get down there? I think we're about 25 hours into YouTube videos at this point of Lake Gunnersville. Um, Kyle is uh, trying to sabotage your interview, your moment of top water right live glory, and he's over here playing Ruining on YouTube. <laughs> I'm trying to post, post a cool picture. Settle down. <laughs> but no, um, been watching a lot of YouTube videos, different tournaments, you know, Bassmaster, FLW, it's been down there. Heck um, yeah. Looking at Navionics, just you know, trying to come up with a game plan. So. I try to do the same thing. Uh, I Pyatt, uh, a week or so ago, posted a video of the last Bassmaster uh, championship down there. And I was literally taking the graphics from the Bassmaster show and watching them where they're leaving the launch at and where they're going at on the map. And I had Google Maps open on the other screen. Yep. And I'm putting pins down. I'm like, oh, he went there. Oh, that weed line's right there. <laughs> that exact same way. Trying to do some research. The likelihood of me getting down there to pre-fish other than the, the week before, you know, is slim to none since it's such a distance. But that's the kind of homework I'm trying to do and prepare myself is come up with a, you know, plan A, plan B, plan, you know, plan C. Yep, that's that's 50% of the battle. Yeah, so. Absolutely. I think I said it in one of the first episodes of uh, we were talking about this, but it's, it's such a huge body of water that's basically overwhelming. And I think what you really have to do is essentially pick an area break it down and, and find you know where that pattern is and then look for areas that have a similar you know type of structure and and, and find that pattern again um, because it's just a massive body of water especially uh, with you know with what we're, we're used to I mean fishing up here obviously we all fished a lot of these smaller lakes in the summer and then we had some of the bigger ones for like the state championship and stuff like that but even some of those big ones in the state championship i felt like they were you know large bodies of water but they don't even compare to what we're going to fish down there so no. it's just going to be i think you have to break it down pick an area and, and fish that area find out what you're fishing there and, and then you can kind of take that and apply it to other areas yeah i think for me personally uh you know going from trail series like mkt and top water there were a few events where I was going into that event and I felt super confident, like today's the day, like I've done my research, I did some pre-fishing, I know where I'm going. Clearly those were all false confidences that <laughs> never happened. But uh, going down to Lake Gunnersville, totally different story. I, there's zero confidence going down there that I'm going to compete with the other 799 guys that are down there. For me, this is all about the experience, enjoying it with uh, the fellow anglers. Uh, you know, in our house that we have, I think there's like, what, seven or eight other guys staying there. Yep. The water dog house is literally across the, the lake from us, like 15 minutes away. So hoping to hook up with the water dog house and have some fun down there. Um, you and I were talking about earlier that we're actually going to do a Top Water Live, you know, podcast from Lake Guttersville while we're down there. So yep. brain yeah, is starting to roll about how that's gonna play out, even though it's not until April. I am so excited about this opportunity to get down there. Yeah, it's gonna be an absolute blast. I'm excited for it and to be able to go do a live down there, obviously fish the national championship, but just to be able to all the thing, do all the things that we get to do is gonna be absolutely amazing. Absolutely. <clears throat> just a, a quick little break here. I've been alerted that uh, Chris Blair, who is the uh, other White Claw uh, aficionado, I guess you would <laughs> call it that. Representative. <clears throat> white, white, 
follow marketing team. They sent them in the bars to promote it. It is in our audience tonight. So I just want to say hi, Mr. Blair. <clears throat> <laughs> Welcome, Mr. Blair. Thank you for taking the time. <clears throat> So, Cody, what kind of yak are you currently running? Um, I actually have a Vibe, which is a little bit lesser known brand. But, uh, <clears throat> How do you of, like the Vibe? I love it. In a drag race, I can take pretty much anybody. It helps that I have the motor on the back, you know. But even going up against the other more expensive kayaks, you know, I can, I can run with them. Nice. So, coming, I did some bass boat tournaments on the other side so speed was kind of what you wanted out the gate yeah and so that's what i was really looking for and it, it suits me well i like those vibes for that reason uh, they're super lightweight I, i've personally never you know fished out of one um but i've seen a handful of guys run them i know matt elliott watching and i he's a big vibe fan i know they carry vibes uh, at their place and uh, I saw the Vibe paddle boards that he had uh, mm. up at the state MKT state championship last year. Those are super cool. Yeah. So. Yeah, no, I actually purchased mine from Matt down there at Mainstream. And nice. uh, I had gone, I was actually looking at a, a different brand, and I had walked past him at the Grand Rapids Gun and Knife Show. I was like, no, I'm not interested, not interested. And I went back, I was like, man, you know, I love the look of that kayak. <laughs> and so I went back and threw some money down and went and picked it up the next day. So. Yeah. That's nice. awesome. But. Now you've done some modifications to it as well, right? Some homemade gadgetry? A little bit. You know, we got some hillbilly rigging going <laughs> what, on what on the back do, side of it. To it? Um, I built my own trolling motor mount to go on the back side. Uh, then just the normal stuff beyond that, you know, egg trolley. Tell and... the viewers how I've seen it. So <laughs> tell us how you, it was pretty, pretty well engineered how you did it. So I, I don't know if I would go works. that far. So. I would go functional. It is functional. <laughs> uh, it's just a chunk of two by four that I cut in half and bolted together and then build a couple of uh, little brackets that go down into the track that go up and screw to the sides and then at my the vibes come with a blanking on the word rudder excuse right. me the rudder Facebook installed on the back side oh i'm sure it will <laughs> pyatt's out there already typing something i can feel it but no it has a rudder installed that's foot actuated so i was able to just use the pedals use the for that pedals exactly. to change the direction of the yep, motor i can steer with that that's so. pretty cool man yep i like that yeah i was actually just kind of off topic here a little on topic but not talking about cody but I uh, talked with Matt the other day and he talked about the Vibe actually has a bunch of cool stuff they're coming out with a whole new model that they've been talking about so if it's something you're interested in definitely talk to Matt down at Mainstream because he's got the uh, the scoop on that and they've definitely been bringing a lot of cool stuff to the market. That Shearwater, I'm hoping he can hook me up here for a, for a good price so looks pretty good for their first entry into the pedal kayak market. So. Yeah I haven't checked it out personally but I've heard a lot of good things. Oh, I'm watching Matt Pyatt. What a troll, man. I'm kind of glad I can't read Isn't him right now. Isn't he supposed to be so. bowling tonight or something like that? He's Isn't he bowling. supposed Hold to be on. bowling every night? I think I can block him here. Just give me a minute. <laughs> Perfect. We won't have to deal with him anymore. <laughs> well, I actually, it. my plan was not to be mean to him tonight, but yeah, it's we, off the th we had talked like pre-production about let, let's have a little more serious conversation tonight. And, yeah. You my, know. my plan was to trash talk Pyatt before he came on so that he would be <laughs> fired up and ready to go when he got here. <laughs> And I've been a dick to Cody for the last couple of weeks for that <laughs> specific reason. I probably won't be nice tomorrow, but it's the thought that counts. But no, Since I met you at the beginning of the year? Just all <laughs> built into this moment? <laughs> Fair enough. It's actually pretty funny because Cody and I were having a conversation. We were going out to pre-fish the Grand, which did a whole lot of good. But uh, we're on our way, and, and I'm just being a complete jerk over text message to him. And he just responded, nice as can be. And I... Uh, I'm, I'm laughing and at the same point I'm texting him. I'm like, you're like the nicest person. And I'm just a complete jerk. And, and he says, well, he's nice over text message because that is the, you know, the way that's recorded. But you can see that there's a record of that. And we were actually talking about earlier tonight between Mike and I that we're pretty sure his wife looks at his messages <laughs> to make sure he's being a nice person. And he doesn't want to let that out. Oh, <laughs> she knows I'm not a nice person. <laughs> it's not a surprise. But as soon as I pull up to the boat ramp, I don't remember exactly what he said, but he started like throwing it down as soon as I got to the boat ramp. <laughs> And I'm like, who the hell was the guy that stole your phone that I was texting? It was all nice. See, oh, yeah. that's the best thing about this Topwater series is I think that everyone has gotten to know each other so well along the, the Terrell series that 
you're able just to roll up to the ramp and, and start talking smack and throw right. because everybody knows it's just in good fun. Right. The best part is they're going to dish it right back out. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> and you can keep this running all year round. So it's just kind of who I am. Like in our our family, there's always been the saying that if we're nice to you, it means we don't like you. And it's true. I feel like I'm the only one that really takes that to heart. Maybe maybe my brother Ryan. He's he just might be a jerk, but I feel like I'm the only one that really takes that to heart, and I'm just mean to everybody, but it's all good. All right. Back on task. Back, up, back on the task. My job is to sit over here and get you guys off at that. You're the, the, whole, you're the, the whole. Ed McMahon of this, right, that's the, of this show. Just, just cut his mic. Wait, right the microphone has to like drop down from the ceiling. <laughs> all right, I'll stop talking. So... Uh, the Topwater Trail Series this past season, what was your favorite body of water that you were able to fish on the schedule? And I've asked a lot of people what their favorite lake was or river, and it's it's been different across the board. Everybody kind of found the, the, their own personal favorite off the series the list that we had this year. What about you? Uh, well, going into it, I was really looking forward to Jordan. Um, I've done a lot of fishing on Jordan Lake in the past. And so I was really expecting high things for myself, and it did not work out whatsoever. <laughs> but in the end, I really I enjoyed Green Lake, um, Green? my first lake that I caught a, a uh, full limit on. So nice. it was it was pretty good. Nice. Was that wasn't the lake that uh, you came flying back by, right? Because you had forgotten. We're not going to discuss discuss that uh, that yeah. uh, meeting there, Mike. Yeah. Hey, at least you were honest. I was. You called yourself on it, ran back, got your your life jacket out of the truck and yeah. threw it back on so i was in my rain gear good. i'm not used to that yeah yeah that was a tricky lake too uh, kyle had a good game plan for that lake uh finding that point but yep i remember that one yeah that was the one that uh had a little park tiny parking lot was kind of set down from the road yeah yep yep actually i got that point from uh adam turk who pre-fished with me we went out there in the boat one day and pre-fished with me he's like i'd fish that spot and it worked. <laughs> I, I liked Green Lake too. I like going back to Jordan. Jordan, uh, and we'll get into that a little bit later. But Jordan was probably my favorite lake on the. On I'm the definitely lake. looking forward to it. I want some redemption on that lake. That was a cool so. lake. I was highly entertained at that lake too. There was a, a younger guy out there on his jet ski, and his girlfriend was on the other jet ski, and he couldn't get it running quite right. So he was making laps from his jet ski out in the water to the parking lot, stealing spark plugs out of his truck <laughs> and running back to his jet ski. You got to do what you got to do. You got to run him. I mean, he got to spend the afternoon with his girlfriend out on the water, but <laughs> that was a little risky stealing the spark plugs out of your truck. <laughs> I probably would have loaded up and gone home. You're not die hard like that, Mike. I know. Not, not on those jet skis. <laughs> What are you uh, most looking forward to for the 2020 season? Uh, you've seen a handful of lakes released. Uh, uh, are you going to try and fish the trail series at all? Are you going to focus more on league division? What's um, your game plan for 2020? Doing the league and the trail, hopefully, you know, just hitting as much as I possibly can. Nice. Um, wanting to hit some of the more northern tournaments that I know Kyle's going to be running with Water Dog. Heck yeah. So try to get some of the more southern southern end of them yeah that's awesome but, now uh, i know speaking of league division uh for those of you that don't know we've mentioned this a few times but cody's actually stepping up as a tournament director and teaming up with mr dave mall this year to run our roots division kind of the the west southwest division so to speak so how do you feel about doing that i think you guys got really desperate for people <laughs> to help with uh you were digging the bottom of the barrel before you found me but i'm really looking forward to it we got a pretty good game plan pretty good list of lakes going on um i think it ought to be a really good year yeah. give a lot of different opportunities to different people in different areas so that's awesome man and uh, you're actually gonna release lakes uh five through eight here yeah. in just a little bit so that's pretty cool i got the chance to check uh, out the lakes that you guys have uh picked for uh the roots division and uh some really nice bodies of water on there one of them i've never heard of before so that's exciting maybe get to try something new so yeah that'll be an absolute blast and that's kind of the thing with this i mean obviously you know some of these lakes that we're we're doing this year are repeats of last year but there's a lot of new ones but that was so much fun about last year is all these lakes that you've never fished before and a lot of them we're going to be going back to and it'll probably be the second time we fished it because you know you just don't have a chance to go hit all of these tiny little lakes and, and pre-fish them all the time Jordan Lake, the one we were talking about a minute ago, I did half decent on that tournament, but 
I didn't have any chance to pre-fish it because it's an hour away and you're only going for a three-hour tournament. You're not going to spend another right. five, six hours pre-fishing for a three-hour tournament. Not going to talk about how I pre-fished for almost all of them this year and <laughs> did terribly most of the time. But, you know, we won't talk about that. So We can if you want. We can talk about Jordan Lake. I don't want to talk about Jordan Lake. We've I, talked about that one enough. I, I do a little bit. I can make fun <laughs> of both of you guys talk about Jordan yeah. Lake. <laughs> what happened to Jordan? Oh, you took my spot. <clears throat> I didn't, I didn't take your spot. your spot. You gave up your spot because you broke a pole. Well, I got scared. <laughs> Getting snagged. I got snagged on some guy's on like some guy's pontoon dock. canopy, and it literally it first cast too. <clears throat> it was first cast of the tournament, and my little Ned rig goes flying through the wind over this guy's pontoon canopy, and I went to like give it just a little wiggle to bring it back over, and the tip of the pole snaps off. <laughs> this Fast just, forward this just like, sounds like excuses like to me. I, I don't. Into the right, Grant? This excuses. is just excuses. <laughs> oh. Because fast forward two hours later and the big bass came out of that that dock i know that because i caught it yeah yeah i got scared because they were like sitting on their back porch <laughs> it was on this little point and uh the man and his wife were sitting on their back porch and super nice house super nice pontoon and stuff and i was like some you know jerk just rode up on his little kayak and is ripping holes in my so i i took off and i went down the lake like six or seven houses and you know, Kyle was working his way back, and he ended up stopping right where I had wanted to start at and uh, clean house that night. I, did you win that? No, no, Dave. Dave Mole. Yeah, Dave Mole beat me on that one. Yeah. But uh, uh, I was fortunate to get big bass. Him and I actually had a couple ones where we got pretty close. But you were probably pretty right to be scared of those guys because I caught the fish off that dock later, and I'm still there kind of fishing it. And I actually ended up. It was one of those points where like all my lines were broken, and so I decided I was going to start. You know getting some reties done and stuff like that and I'm getting pushed in by the wake so I'm kind of end up being close to his dock and he brings out his little like you know eight inch tall dog starts you know telling his dog to go get me or something like that <laughs> I couldn't hear off the top of my head <laughs> but we love those guys yeah oh ah oh, the well, guardians we, of the lake from yep. their docks we'll have some more to talk about that later yeah oh man <laughs> and Cody, Cody loves the guardians of the lake yeah we're not going back to that lake though so <laughs> Jordan Lake, that was a fun lake, uh, and we'll talk a little more about that in a few minutes. Uh, but right now, uh, we are going to take a little break and uh, stay tuned after this sponsored message. Hey everyone, Abu Garcia Pro, Hunter Shock here. I want to talk about my favorite rod in the Abu Garcia lineup, the Veritas series. I have a ton of confidence in this rod. It's one of the first rods I've ever used and it's grown with me throughout the years. And there's so many great characteristics on this low price point rod. First is the foam handle. Has a great locking seat for your reel that's gonna keep it secure at all times. Moving all the way up to the bait keeper here. It's a very unique bait keeper that you can slide your Texas rig in, not having to unhook it from your plastic. All the way up to the blank, it's 30 ton graphite. It's super light, strong, and durable, very sensitive, and the titanium guides are light and also very strong. If you haven't checked out this Abu Garcia Veritas rod, I suggest you do. All right, welcome back. And uh, now we'd like to take a couple minutes and uh, release some lakes i know uh that's a big part of the last four podcast is the weekly lake release i know a lot of people look forward to seeing what lakes are going to be fishing on each division uh tonight we're going to give you two different divisions uh, each week we've just been doing four lakes out of each tonight we're going to double up and release the first four lakes from the huron division that's the southeast michigan area uh, and we're also going to release uh, in the roots division lakes five through eight tonight and uh, since Cody is a uh, tournament director in the roots division we're actually going to let him release those lakes in just a few minutes uh, so let's get started yeah real quick before we do that just shout out to Mike Kaczkowski and uh, Cantwell seeing both of you guys uh, well seeing Cantwell throwing shit at us and uh, Kaczkowski <laughs> just saying what's up so what's up Mike uh, these are our <coughs> tournament uh, directors for the Huron Division. So that's going to be southeast, kind of based around Oakland County, but a bunch of areas. And then they're going quite a ways up north. I almost released a lake, so I'm glad I didn't hear yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> Spoiler. <laughs> going all over. So southeast Michigan, we did Pontiac Lake over there in our kind of little test and had a great response. It was an absolute blast. So here we go for the uh, release of yes. number one, which nobody knows what it is. <laughs> number one in the <laughs> Huron Division. 
We're going to stop at Cass Lake. Cass Lake is on the main branch of the Clinton River. Uh, Cass Lake covers about 1,280 acres and an approximate maximum depth of, depth of 123 feet. Uh, this is Oakland County's largest and deepest lake. So a lot to look forward to with Cass Lake. It's a cool body of water. Uh, I mean, it, 1,280 acres is a big body of water, but it's pretty deep too. 123 feet yep. uh, deep is a deep lake. Uh, I it's believe got we're the, hitting that in our trail division too, aren't we? Yeah, Yeah, we so that would be obviously a great opportunity to pre-fish for that trail division. Yeah, absolutely. So good call by Mike and Chris on uh, throwing casts to start out the season. Uh, like you just said, easy opportunity to get out there, hit the Huron division uh, in the league series and be able to pre-fish that for the upcoming Sunday trail series. So I like it when things like that work out. It's almost like they were thinking. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so you might see a trend on that here with uh, the next couple as well. So lake number two in the Huron division. We're going to go to Kent Lake. Kent Lake, uh, we talked about this uh, two weeks ago, uh, is a 1,200-acre reservoir lake uh, with a max depth of approximately 36 feet formed by damming the Huron River near the headwaters. Uh, Kent Lake is mostly located in Oakland County in Milford and Lyon Townships with a small portion including its dam located in Green Oak Township in Livingston County. Uh, we've talked about Kent Lake a couple times. Uh, we know that it's on the trail series uh, as well. We're going there for the uh, NOMO tournament put on by Kayak the Great Lakes Club. Um, looking forward to getting over to Kent a couple times. Uh, one, it's convenient. It's like 15 minutes south of my house, so yep. it's right down the road, uh, but it's a fun lake. It's one of those lakes that you can feel totally comfortable bringing the whole family out on. So if you've got a dad or an uncle or you know a son, a daughter, wife, somebody like that that is interested in kayak fishing, introducing them to uh, the series on a lake like Kent is a perfect opportunity. Super cool lake. Absolutely, yeah, it's been fun. I mean, we fished it a couple times. The NOMO is a big event that's held there every year, and we fished it for that, bring the family out for that one. It's a, it's a fun lake. It's a, it's a good lake to fish, and there's definitely a lot of variety there. You can kind of fish whatever you want to fish. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, plenty of spots in that lake as well. It's in the Metro Park, so uh, if you pack a lunch, we, we've done this before, you pack a lunch and you just paddle off. There's picnic areas and tables and stuff scattered all on the lake. You can stop for 10, 20 minutes, stretch your legs, eat lunch, and then get back out there, you know, to fish that rest of that event. Yeah, I've actually heard there's smallmouth in that lake. So if anybody out there listening knows of smallmouth, I'd like to confirm whether anybody's I, actually caught one in there. I, I bet Tom has a couple of different spots you could try <laughs> just yeah. to find out if they're Tom there. Tom Mullins, if you're listening, let me know where the smallmouth on Kent Lake are. <laughs> Actually, awesome. he did give me some great tips for Kent Lake before I fished the Nomo this year. I went out the night before and I caught a winning bag in like 45 minutes. And then the next day, it didn't happen. I still did okay. <laughs> I caught my slam, which is a, a pike, uh, a, a bass, and a panfish in that event, but nothing like I had caught the night before. So I want to reply to uh, Chris Scott. I see uh, Mike and Chris and those guys kind of caught it, but he asked what was the first lake. So uh, just to recap, uh, Lake 1 uh, on the Huron Division is going to be Cass Lake, Lake number 2, Kent Lake, and Lake number 3 in the Huron Division, uh, we are going to Lake Orion. Lake Orion is a super cool lake. I know we added this uh, along with Mike on the Youth Angler series that we're going to be running. It's such a cool lake. I mean, look at the graphic and you can see what a weird shaped lake that is. There are so many little fingers and tributaries to that lake that you can really spread out all over that body of water uh, and have your own space. There's tons of cool fishing in Lake Orion. Uh, it's an all sports lake. It's just over 500 acres in Orion Township with a max depth of approximately 80 feet. So good sized lake uh, with it being so spread out, uh, you know, with a nice deep average of 80 feet. Um, that's a good sized lake. Uh, located in the village of Lake Orion in Orion Township, and it is the eighth largest lake in Oakland County. So we're seeing some Oakland County lakes there in the Southeast Division. Um, super cool. I, I know the Southeast Division 
puts out a good showing at all of these events. So uh, I'm hoping to see big turnouts. I think Mike and Chris did a great job on picking these bodies of water to get a great turnout uh, because they're different styles of lakes. Uh, Absolutely. You know, uh, something for everybody. Have you been able to go over to the east side at all and fish any of these lakes? Are you familiar with um, any of these? Or are they all brand new to you? All brand new to me. The furthest east side fish would be Lobdell, which yeah. I did here this fall with Topwater. But outside of that, I really don't have any experience over there. So if I'm able to make it out to any, it will be a new... It's new... probably too tough of a series over there for probably. West Westsiders. That's fine. I, I just donate money wherever I go anyways, <laughs> so it doesn't matter. I love it. That's how I did it all year over here. So let's move on to lake number four, the last lake that we're going to release tonight in the Huron Division. Uh, lake number four, we're going to go to Lake Fenton. Uh, love this lake. It's just north of where I currently live uh, in Fenton and uh, located just east of US 23 uh, in Lake Fenton, Genesee County. Uh, it's a good size lake at 845 acres uh, with an approximate depth of about 92 feet. Uh, it's a beautiful lake. It's super pretty, uh, you know, like a lot of these area lakes. The homes are magnificent. Uh, you will get some boaters out there uh, on the weekends uh, having a lot of fun, but on the weeknights it shouldn't be that pressured. Uh, so to run a trail series on Lake Fenton should be a lot of fun. Uh, again, plenty of room to spread out on this lake. It's a good sized lake. Yep. And uh, the fishing is incredible on this lake. It's known for its bass fisheries. So excited that that got added to the lake. Yep, that'll be a fun one close to home. I don't know that I've ever been out on it, but I don't mm -hmm. think I've actually ever fished it, but it'll be a fun one to fish. I, the bass is amazing out there. The pike, huge pike out there. So if you like pike fishing and you want to go pre-fish, uh, go hit up Lake Fenton. It's a lot of fun out there. So that is our four lakes for the Huron Division that we're going to release tonight. Uh, next up, we're going to move over to the west side of the state and announce lakes five through eight in the Roots Division. And like we said, Cody being a tournament director for the Roots Division, uh, we're going to let him announce these lakes since he's here in person tonight. So have at it. All right. <clears throat> Thank you, Mike. Um, week number five, we're going to go back to Jordan Lake, where we were discussing earlier. Um, big all sports lake in Barry slash Ione County. Um, about 430 acres, up to 58 feet deep. Um, very, very good fishery. Lots and lots of bass in this lake. Um, if you can't catch a limit there, you're doing something wrong, which Easy. I was there. So, you know. Anyways, I digress. Um, there's a lot of a lot of good bass in that lake. Um, so yeah, week number six, we're going to go back to, or no, we're going to Long Lake in Barry County, which is down near Cloverdale. Um, it's a new lake for this year, uh, 289 acres, gets about 48 feet deep at its deepest point. It's kind of a different shaped lake. Um, so yeah, I've been out there a couple of times, never really been able to put it together, but it should be a fun place to get people kind of further south in, involved in our uh, tournament. Um, let's see, number seven, we're going back to Big Pine Island, which we ended our year on this year. Um, it's in Kent County, 45, excuse me, 45 feet deep and about 223 acres. Um, it's a beautiful, beautiful lake to be out on. Uh, we had a, what, about 20 guys, I believe, there Unless last time. Matt Pyatt. I, it wasn't a good day for anyone really to be out there fishing, but it was a beautiful lake to be on. Period. So, <laughs> yeah, that yeah. One, actually, that was an interesting lake because uh, you and I pre-fished it. Yep. We got the opportunity to pre-fish it once. We, well, we were pre-fishing, was it Green Lake that we were pre-fishing? We no, we were pre-fishing Long Lake and we got blown off of there. Right. A different Long Lake, not the one that we just mentioned, but we were pre-fishing Long Lake and it was, we, we went out there for a little bit, it looked like it was maybe going to rain. We said, oh, we'll tough this out. And then suddenly we were like, no, we're not toughing this out. <laughs> so we pulled up to the dock. We're like, well, we'll, we'll tie the boat up to the dock because it's going to pass by. Another 20 minutes later, we're like, it's not going to pass by. So <laughs> we just pulled the boat out of the trailer. Well, I'm like, hey, Big Pine, which is the last uh, lake of the year, is just a little bit west of here. So let's go hit up that one. So we go, we hit up Big, Big Pine, and we did a pretty decent job pre-fishing that night. And uh, I got the opportunity to f fish it with Matt Pyatt. 
maybe about four days before the tournament, and I, I did pretty well that night. And he did he did decent as well. That's the joke last week. He talks about me losing a four pounder by not. I say I believe someone was trying to boat flip a rather large fish, and right, yeah, didn't go so well for seven, him that night. Seven pound test was not a good idea, but uh, yeah, no, that's it's definitely an interesting one. And then none of us did good in the yeah. championship. And the, the reason I wanted to mention is because. Uh, a guy that came out for that one actually was his first, I believe his first first tournament with us, but I believe his first tournament, first tournament ever. ever, and he won that one. And we actually had that happen a couple times this year where guys coming out fishing their first tournament ever were able to win. And that's kind of the, the challenge because you only got three hours out there. I think when you've got eight hours on a Sunday, the guys that know the waters, the guys that have that experience have a good opportunity to be able to come out with a win because if their plan doesn't prevail or it doesn't come out, they have a chance to adjust. Right. But with this three hours, you've got a plan and you've kind of got to make it work. And sometimes you don't have a plan and you just try something and that <laughs> works. But right. it gives the opportunity for guys coming out that haven't fished a lot of tournaments to really have a chance to come out and win or take home a prize. I think that's one of the really cool things about the Topwater Trail Series with it being such a short time. And I know we talked a little bit about this with Matt last week when he was here. But a three hour tournament is not a lot of time for you to lollygag. You've got to go out, you've got to find what's working, what's not, uh, and figure it out fairly quickly. But at that same time, that gives everybody the same kind of chance. You don't have eight hours to, to put a pattern together and figure it out over a length of time and move spot to spot to spot. You know, it, it's quick time. And I think it gives everybody the ability to get out there and compete right out of the gate. Uh, you know, whether you're fishing the ramp like Maul does, or if you go across the lake like you do, you know, it, it's equal opportunity in a short three-hour tournament. Yeah, towards the end of the year, I, I stopped going near as far. And actually, my rule was that I would, if I had a spot, I would go, you know, for example, I was working my, my way down a shoreline. I would go for eight minutes because the way we do it is we do a shotgun start, kind of a little bit different than what your traditional tournament or kayak tournament would be is we all start, we're in one location, and we all start from there. And most of the guys are jumping in their kayaks with like two minutes left because we're all having a good time and be asking with each other. We jump in, we go, and you've got 10 minutes, four lines, lines out. So you don't have that hour or 30 minutes to go to your spot, you know, on the other side of the lake. And so some guys are like, oh, well, I'm fishing this tournament. Can I go, you know, two miles up the river? We'll have at it, but you're going to miss out on, on time to fish. That's a risk you got to take. And so towards the end of the year, I realized I would go eight minutes in whatever direction I wanted to go. And then I would stop and get prepared and start fishing because <laughs> it was kind of like that Dave Mole thing that he had is that he had the opportunity. I don't even want to know what you're laughing about. Ah, uh, some of these guys in the chat. Yeah, I, I see that bass, Chris. He's right there. He's just hanging around in that hole right there. <laughs> Toss that Ned rig uh, out there. And let's <laughs> old ned <laughs> all right let's uh go back ahead to where we were lake number eight and then i want to circle back around and talk about some of these uh lakes that you've talked oh, about for sure other than uh just big pine so the uh, last lake we're going to release for the evening is lake number eight for the roots division and we're going to campbell lake it's in oceana county um i don't think so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's right. No, no. We have some I think it's in Kent County. Fake news here on Topwater Live. It's near uh, Caledonia, Michigan. So uh, yeah, it's a smaller lake. Haven't been there a whole lot, but it was kind of in the area that we were wanting to be able to fish. And so uh, yeah, we're gonna go out there and try to put something together. So that picture you just saw is completely wrong. That is not the lake. Is it in Kent County? Yes. It kind of looked like the same picture. I think the graphic was correct, but the information. Let's say the graphic may have been right, incorrect. but correct. Yeah. Yeah, the picture that looks like the same picture. Good lord, who's running this thing? Not my fault. It's not my fault. Freaking intern. When in doubt, blame it on Grant. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Grant. Oh man. But no, it's a new lake again for this year. Um, we're trying to find something more in the Caledonia, Grand Rapids general area, and this one kept coming up. I know it's really kind of renowned for being a musky lake. But well, we're gonna go there and try to hook into some largemouth. So and that one'll be that'll be about what late June I'm thinking for that one. I believe so. June twenty third, is that what the graphic said? Yeah. So the muskie will probably be a little bit deeper as deep yeah. as that a lake will allow to be if if they're in there. So this guy? Yes. So sixty acre lake? It's gonna be tight. That's that's elbow to elbow out. Again, there. we'll I have to go through and look at that, but Man. Did anybody approve this list? 
That might, might, might change. <laughs> We're putting you on the spot. I feel like there was a different one that we had been discussing, but we'll, <laughs> week number eight may be different than Camp Bell. We'll have to there's just say that for now. There's probably 1,500 Camp Bell Lakes in the Lower Peninsula. Just like yeah, Indian obviously. Lake, Long there's or, Longs and Greens. Any Camp yeah. Bell Lake. <laughs> <laughs> Find one Scott Fish. Uh, the one in Oceana looked better. <laughs> Like right. Triple size. This, this is falling apart. We've got a sponsor information we're going to throw at you. And we'll come back in just a moment. Hey guys, Fletcher Shock here, Abu Garcia Pro. I want to talk to you today about gear ratio speed while flipping and pitching. You know, flipping and pitching is something that I do quite a bit. I primarily use the pitching technique. And when you're using the pitching technique and you're and you're pitching the bait out there, it's very important to be able to bring that bait back really quick to make another flip. And the only way that I'm able to do that successfully is by using a high speed gear ratio reel. Uh, this is the new Revo Rocket. This thing turns 41 inches per turn of the handle. So I'm constantly getting my bait in the cover to the bottom, um, obviously and back out to the next spot as quick as I possibly can with a higher speed gear ratio reel. All right, welcome back, guys. So we just have a couple last segments we wanted to go through. Uh, the first one is just kind of a short one that I wanted to bring up, and it's kind of a, I have it listed on the paper here, is why do we do this? So obviously Mike and I and, and Cody jumping on and Grant back here working at the, the desk, you know, we put a lot of effort into this, and we're not paid for it. We don't take home a big paycheck or big sponsors or anything like that. So I just kind of wanted to bring it up for a minute and talk about what why do we do this? What is the reason for... You know putting in the the effort that we do the work that we do and obviously with anything you hope it grows to be something bigger but you know it might not you know that it could just be what it is and so i kind of want to talk about what's what's the drive behind you know coming out and doing these things and that kind of stuff i mean you know cody obviously is, you know gonna have a new baby at home and you know wife that hopefully doesn't yell it's too bad for leaving all the time to go fishing no she's, she's like she's very supportive, supportive right? very can't complain so. and uh you know mike you know driving across the state i mean you drive all the way across the state to do these podcasts it's a couple hour drive for you each week and, and mike and i work together so he's got a couple reasons to come over but you know makes a point to it's mostly the podcast right, right. <laughs> i feel and like i feel like before the podcast and the fishing you came over like once every few weeks now it's like you're on it <laughs> so i just want to know what, what is it uh, what, what brings you to want to spend all the time doing this passion about not only what we are trying to do uh, by building a obviously a, a top water name and, and a brand in the fishing community but we've talked about it lots of times for me it's uh, the passion about the camaraderie with the fellow anglers um, I started out my kayak competition fishing on the MKT trail um, and like you said, we're donating money. Yeah, we're donating money. And yep. I was getting my ass kicked. Uh, felt there's no way I'm putting up numbers like these guys that are placing are putting up numbers. Um, I needed to build some confidence. I needed some experience. Uh, obviously, I've been fishing my whole life out of a boat, but fishing from a kayak, totally different setup. Yep. It's a different way of fishing, different way of looking at things. Um, different feel, you name it. So by putting together the Topwater Trail series, uh, a weeknight type series where, and I've always been a, a team oriented guy. I've always been a sports guy. I coach everything. I coach football, I coach baseball, I coach wrestling, you name it, all youth sports uh, that I have my hand in. But I wanted to try and take that to my kayak fishing approach where more of a team approach, even though it's an individual competition, I'm fishing for myself, the camaraderie with the fellow anglers, they all became friends, you know, my friends. Uh, I looked forward to that weekly camaraderie. They not only encouraged me each week to keep coming back out, which helped build my confidence up, but they were giving me information and tips on the Facebook page or when we'd meet up and pre-fish, things like that. Um, so it not only helped me build my confidence up in our league type setup, mm -hmm. you know, and that was kind of our goal was to make this more of a league style setup where 
you've got your co-ed softball teams or you got your bowling league and stuff like why not a weekly fishing league where you get together with your friends and you go out and you compete i mean you can go out have a lot of fun with your friends you can compete you could also walk home with three four hundred bucks on a tuesday night like so big perks of just hang on and hanging out with your buddies and right. fishing. it never happened for me but <laughs> <laughs> there was always that opportunity out there um so that i mean honestly i'm getting kind of lost here in my thoughts because there's a lot of things that we've put into this but for me the, the camaraderie with my fellow anglers um using the topwater trail series as not only a confidence booster and a way to compete for the newer anglers uh giving me that uh confidence to go and compete in some of these more elite style series the the big weekend eight hour type tournaments that you know the mkts the kbfs things like that the sure. hobies where now after i've got a ton of top water tournaments you know and which you can rack up a lot of them in a short amount of time doing yep. it every single week for three hours at a time. Yep. It, it's a lot of practice, a lot of preparation practice, getting my kayak set up for that particular week, getting everything prepared on a weekly basis. I got in a ton of practice. Now, whenever I get set up and I'm going to compete in one of these larger elite style series events, I feel way more confident. I feel like I know what I'm doing. I know how to prepare my stuff, what I need to rig, what kind of homework I need to do, what kind of research online I need to look at before I get there. Absolutely. I mean, I feel like with some of these yeah. small tournaments, well, with a lot of tournaments, you go and you've got a game plan. And I feel like if you've been doing this for a while, if you've got a lot of experience, when your game plan, like, a, you know, doesn't, doesn't pan out, you, you come up with a second, you know, plan and, and you can maybe go out and find them. But for a lot of us guys that haven't fished as much, we come up with a game plan. If it doesn't work out, we're kind of scrambling. We're a little bit lost. And I feel like these three-hour tournaments get you an opportunity to try out your game plan. If it doesn't work, you come back next week with a new one. But you're not stuck out there for eight hours while everybody's throwing up 90 inches just trying to figure out what in the world am I not figuring out here. So it gives you a lot of opportunity. And I guess it goes both ways because in one way, it can definitely be a stat pattern if you got the Tourney X stats. Something like a Matthew Pyatt looks like he's you know championship of the world some now. sort of world-class <laughs> fisherman over there you know <laughs> since you're fishing you know i mean you, again a lot of series are four or five events every year and we hold you know 12 but you're fishing you know three times as many events so it can quickly make a difference and cody what about you i mean you jumped on without question really to the i mean actually since i've met you and been talking to you you've kind of consistently said what can i do to help you know and I, I can tell that's obviously the kind of person you are whether it's you know going out and fishing together you're what can i do to help what can i do to help whether it's launching a boat but also with this series you've said you know what can i do to help and you know i said hey if you want to jump on and be a tournament director for this series so so what brings you to have the desire to want to do that well you know i i like i said i came from the bass boat side um <clears throat> and so coming over the first event i fished out of kayak was the mkt go lake the spring and i got my ass beat just terribly mm -hmm. by the lake by the wind by the people everything and so to the point where i gave up at noon i was like you know what this is stupid i'm gonna go home and i called my wife and she's like no you know get back on the lake what are you doing you big sissy you go out there and you know then go to the way and so i went to the way and i was talking to the guys and even at that level they're very open and you know wanting to talk to you i was like oh that's cool you know they're telling me how they were catching fish no one's ever done that at a tournament you know everybody's always been kind of closed-lipped in the bass boat side of it and so that was that was a very new experience to me and it made me want more what made me want to be a part of that kind of a uh, camaraderie like what mike was talking about there and so found the top water and i was like hey you know this is kind of more my speed i'm used to the smaller lakes it's where i'm comfortable at so i really started fishing those and i've, I've enjoyed it. i've loved it you know give me something to go do on a tuesday night go do on the weekends go pre-fish you know all that and so to be able to try to bring that to more people and bring more people who aren't used to tournaments in general into the fold and bringing them to these smaller lakes, it's not as intimidating. You know, Gull Lake in the beginning of May is a very intimidating lake. But, you know, Campbell Lake in June isn't that bad. So it's something I'd like to be able to take to more people, you know, and I really, I'm kind of passionate about that. So. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I feel like this series absolutely brings in a... Uh, lot of, of new people into the sport you know it seemed like every single week that we were out there somebody was new somebody was fishing their first tournament or coming out and giving it a try 
we've got some new ways this year to not only let people try it out uh, without taking as much of a risk, but also ways that, uh, you know, people that try it out and, you know, don't do that well their first time, which is expected, uh, can have, you know, some other prizes to win and stuff like that. And also, we've, like I said, we mentioned before, we've had a lot of people come out on their first tournament and be able to uh, win them that tournament because like I say it's a it's a fresh body of water it's a it's a short amount of time so it, it's kind of a little bit of anybody's game when it comes out so. one thing I do really like about the top water compared to the MKT is that I MKT a lot of times I feel like you know if you're not in the two thousand dollar pedal kayak you're kind of at a disadvantage because you're gonna have to be fighting the waves in the lake more but the smaller lakes it's not as big of a deal I mean how many people in two hundred dollar kayaks did we see out competing with the guys in three thousand dollar hobies oh, yeah. you know and it i feel like it kind of evens the playing field in some regards in that absolutely so. i remember one guy come to me and he won one of his first term and he won it and i remember what he won but you know maybe around 250 bucks or something like that for winning that night and he came to me and he was just absolutely pumped and he's like this is a lot of money to me you know and well when you're going out spending two three four grand on a kayak yeah. you know not saying that you didn't work hard for it but you know you're obviously okay with committing that amount but when you're rolling out on a you know a cheaper kayak and you win that that's just you know that's something that keeps you awesome. going that's, that's an extra feather in the cap that you beat the guy in the four thousand dollar kayak in your 200 dollar yeah, walmart you know it's not yeah it's the angler and not the gear absolutely and that's the thing as far as uh you know with top water it's not a replacement for an mkt or something like that or a challenge against it like i say mike and i run mkt with tom and you know, it's not a replacement or a challenge against that. It's an opportunity to get people into it because I feel like at the base level and, you know, kind of going to my reasons for doing this. I mean, the first thing I would say that, you know, if you ask me what's a one word answer, well, the answer that I do this is, is for the community. But if you actually dig into it, the reason it was like, hey, let's try this out is because those big tournaments are intimidating, even for a full grown man running up there you know, to some lake that they've hardly ever fished in the middle of April where it's, you know, 40 degrees out, you know, and, and kind of, it's a lot different than the middle of summer flipping under docks where you catch fish left and right. And it's intimidating. And then, you know, afterwards though, you get that great sense of community, you know, like my first, you know, MKT event, you know, coming back for the way. Matt stuff. Elliott. I don't want to see what Matt Elliott's saying. Matt Elliott. It's dynamite chime in. Anyway, <laughs> Matt Elliott, didn't mean to cut you off. Though. Have you beat me, Matt Elliott? <laughs> Let's leave it at that. Shots fired. <laughs> uh, I feel the same way you do. And for those of you that know Kyle and myself and you follow the Topwater Trail series, um, especially if you followed the previous three podcasts before tonight uh, and you've noticed all the different collared logos, we kind of talked about that for uh, a few minutes in week one. But... I just to reiterate kind of and piggyback what you were saying to me the topwater trail series uh, why i want to keep doing this it is that building block we starting in 2020 we will have several different levels so to speak of competition where you know starting with the youth angler series where you get kids out there ages 10 to 15 that have never done any of this before or maybe mm -hmm. they've got a kayak and they float around at the beach and stuff but again kayak fishing is a totally different ball game absolutely so you start off with teaching safety and building confidence from day one with the youth and then you move up into the top water league series where you've got four different divisions throughout the state that are all close to home where you can go fish your local bodies of water with most likely people that you know people that you've fished with and if you don't that's the most welcoming community that i've found in all of sports uh, like i said i'm involved in a ton of them and the kayak fishing community is probably the most welcoming community that i've ever been a part of absolutely it, and then you move on from the, the weekly league series and you move to the Sunday trail series, which is a legit trail series that spans from the border of Michigan, Indiana, all the way up to the UP at the biggest lake I've fished on, on Manistique. So another level of competition, more a serious type trail, so to speak. And then you have the more elite series style trails like MKTs uh, and those trail events where they're, you know, long eight hour days out on the water, big bodies of water on yep. a lot of these like St. Clair and, you know, uh, Traverse Bay and places like that where y you got to kind of know, you know, what you're doing when you go out on these style of events. So it, it offers something for everyone. Yep. It, it, it's a building block 
to build the confidence, the knowledge, the safety in order to go out and, and be able to compete on some of these bigger, more prestige trails. Absolutely. And I hope that by what we're doing here, we are able to get, you know, if we're able to get people into the sport that we see competing with us, going to, you know, compete at MKT and, and, and meeting them down at the national championship. To That's that. the goal, so, right? Keep bringing people into this sport, introducing new people into the sport of kayak fishing in a safe, friendly, enjoyable environment that keeps you coming back week after week. Absolutely. That's the point. All right, we are moving on to our giveaway now, and then we're going to play last call. So we got about 10 minutes left. I apologize for going just a little bit over tonight, guys, but we are going to do our giveaway, and then we'll play last call. Um, and then right at the end, we will play our kind of ending graphic. But if anybody wants to stick around, ask questions, ask questions for Cody or anything like that, or just bullshit, which it appears you guys have done a lot of that while we've been on here. <laughs> Hopefully the sensor's paying attention. Do we have a sensor? <laughs> I, hope we have, I hope we have a sensor. It's in your mind. Every time it looks like we're going to say something bad, Grant, just jump in the mic and make some type of noise. Yeah. All right, so that giveaway, what we're doing tonight is whoever can announce the lake that is the first on the Huron schedule. We just announced it earlier, so whoever says the lake that is first on the Huron schedule, I have a... Cannot be a previous winner, cannot be a tournament director. I oh, have that's a... a pack of power baits coming back here. These ones are actually cool. They're called, I believe it's Zest Tails. I have a pack at home that I am anxious to try. It probably won't happen to spring, but they're a pretty sweet little, uh, let's see if I can get them up there. Pretty sweet little uh, bait. So you're going to get a pack of these coming towards you. And, and you already have somebody? I didn't want Pia to win. Pia can't win. We're skipping him. Sorry, Pia. <laughs> <laughs> Chad Watson. Chad Watson won last week. We got to skip him too. Uh, Jeff. All right. Jeff Winslow. Sorry, Chad. Sorry, Matt. Love you guys. We got to spread this out. <laughs> He's lying to you. Angler, no Angler of the Year champions can, yeah, can, win, champions can, can win. win the Berkeley Power Bait. I believe that's an official rule in our bylaws, right? I, it yes. was. I thought it was. Freshly, <laughs> into freshly updated bylaws just yeah. put together today. The ink's yeah. not even dry. Right. Timestamp was like 12 <laughs> seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff Winslow, shoot me your address. These are coming back to you. Thanks, guys. We want to spread these out. <laughs> Chad Watson did have it for first, and Matt Pied. I'll give you guys the, the credit for having it first, uh, but we're going to spread these out. Chad Watson, you won last week. Way to go, go, Matt Pied. You won. You're a winner. <laughs> All right, let's play some last cast. <laughs> Mr. Grant, do you have that, that clock ready to go? <laughs> All right, feel free to chime in on any of these. First one, here we go. I feel like intern Grant should come over here and play with us. He's got a And then the we need intern somebody else to run everything else. <laughs> <laughs> How about I jump out? He's got a mic over there. Well, he can, can, can talk. Man, we've got a camera that shows the back of I his I can head. just turn That's around. That's what I said. That's what I said. Tell him to join in. All right. All right. First one. Best color, Ned Rig. Black and blue. I love the black and blue. You can't go wrong with it, whether it's light color, dark color, water, murky water, chocolate milk, black and blue, Ned Rig. You can't go wrong. I've never Ned used rig. black and blue, Ned Rig. Never, you've never used a black never and blue, Ned Rig? Copper used truce. A Yep. Do you know how to fish? No. <laughs> I don't I don't think well, I do. Well, what's your go-to net rig then? Uh, I had a lot of luck actually on like a bubblegum color last bubble year. Bubblegum, huh? That's pink, right? Yeah. Oh, makes God, sense. Obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Did they make a Sorry, uh, wait, a minute, wait a minute. I feel attacked. What call? He's out there throwing his his bubblegum net rig in his white claw and hand. <laughs> getting DQ'd because he's drinking, but uh, Wait, you want pinky count? while you're doing it too. <laughs> yeah. Uh, for me, black and blue. Uh, a close number two is copper truce. Love copper truce. And number three, uh, PB and J. Yeah, yeah, copper truce. A lot of PB and J's in the chat. Yeah, PB mm -hmm. and J is a big one. Copper truce has been my go-to like every single time. Yeah. It's got obviously it's two different colors, so it feels like you're throwing it wherever. It's going to work. Copper truce has been a game changer. All right, we are moving on to the next one. Wacky rig versus Texas rig. Oh. Texas rig, hands uh, down. Really? That's yeah, probably gotta go weedless. Yeah. Gotta go weedless. This guy uh, throws weedless Texas rigs like it's his job. Uh, I would beat the pants off of you. That, that'd be me weedless. too. Really, really didn't. You must not have fished them this year then. I didn't say I was good with them, <laughs> but throwing against the wacky rig. I, I don't know. Know. I, wacky rig for me is uh, where it's at. I don't fish a lot of Texas rig Cinco's. I, I like the wacky rigs. Uh, you know, I, I'm not a super finesse fisher. But I do like throwing the wacky rigs out there in front of the, the dock post and letting those wiggle down. So I can say I haven't fished a Texas rig Senko a lot, and I'm sure there are situations where both come in handy. I, I do fish a wacky rig a lot. That's kind of my thing, flipping docks. 
What were you throwing at Jordan Lake when I came in second? That was my Texas rig. Oh, I was throwing a wacky rig at that. I found the Texas rig is easier for me to skip up on her docks, <laughs> and I don't have the uh, the abrasiveness of Mr. Pyatt to be able to tuck my Ned rig up against everything metal in the lake <laughs> and listen to it ting off of it. So when, when Pyatt's fishing on a dock next to you, it sounds like he is literally like working on that dock. Like there's construction going, 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 going on. There. on. <laughs> so pretty, pretty diverse answers here in uh, the chat. Uh, half of them Texas, half of them. Uh, wacky Don Roth, neither. He's that old school. I probably never even heard of a wacky rig before. <laughs> that jig bite. He just in, doesn't like the name. In, enjoying his Bud Light, Coors Light. Throwing that jig. <laughs> <laughs> Throw All right. <laughs> Boat versus kayak tournaments. I've yeah, never participated never in a boat, boat tournament, tournament you came before. From, you came so. from the boat world. What's your um the boat world i will give it that i enjoy because all the tournaments that i fished were me and my partner me and my teammate so me and my brother-in-law fished a lot of different tournaments together um and so that part was really cool you know being able to fish with him for the duration of the tournament that being said i really i do prefer the kayak you know it's a lot more kind of back to nature back to your roots deal um even though i do have the motor on the back of mine um it's just a lot quieter you know you have to go in there with a game plan you can't go in and you know oh my spot number one's on this side of the lake spot number two is two miles away you can't do that you have to go in with the idea of what you're going to do and hope that it turns out absolutely so. i think nothing beats the kayak fishing community boat tournaments are a lot of fun i did a couple this year and i got to take my kids and that was a really good time i enjoyed taking my kids out there but uh really the fun was was with the you know for me it was with the kayak tournaments and i did a lot better at those so all right, next one. Tournaments on the Grand River. I, I've had fun uh, on the Grand River. For me, it, it's got to be summer months. I know we wanted to really throw in a Grand River tournament on the top water fall series schedule. Yeah, it just ended up being later in the fall as our series finale actually last week. And for me, it's, it's too cold. I, I don't want to be river fishing that on moving water, choppy. Nah, I, yeah. summertime it's, Grand River, beautiful. Uh, fishing in between six or seven duck hunters on their ship. No, I don't wanna do that anymore. <laughs> that was no fun. Yeah, uh, Grand River kicked me twice this year, both for MKT and for the final top water. So I'm mm -hmm. not a big fan of it, to be honest with you. Grant, what about you? I, I like the Grand River stuff. I fish a lot of the bayous. But uh, it definitely has its ups and downs as far as, you know, when I can do well in it or when I can't do well. And most times I don't do really well, but every now and then you get lucky and you catch a couple nice ones here and there. But definitely a fun one. Terrible. To, fun one to fish. It's one of my favorite places to fish, but I've never really done that yeah, well in a tournament. I haven't done well either. All right, looks like we've got a surprise entry onto our last cast. We're talking Notre Dame football. <laughs> Last cast. Wow. <laughs> wow. Oh man, what a miserable, miserable Saturday. I was actually on my way Hold over. On. Why was Saturday was miserable? Because oh, we got not a lot of asses beat. Can I ask questions? We got, yeah, I don't did care. I, did I, cheat? I don't play for them. <laughs> I just donate money to them. <laughs> it was a miserable game. We got our asses beat. Uh, I think maybe came in a little bit too uh ego was too big because jim harbaugh is a complete loser and uh so is his khakis but i think uh we came in with a big ego and just got our asses beat uh i honestly didn't even watch the game didn't look at any highlights tried to block it out of memory already and move on to virginia tech this week um surprise we only dropped from 8th to 16th um it what, do you, what else can I say as an ass whooping man? Uh, <laughs> it sucks that we have to wait uh, till 2033 for a rematch. Um, why Michigan and Notre Dame don't play each other uh, every year you're is out, ridiculous. You're out of, you're out of time. time. You're uh, out of time. It's over. You, you tried to make up. You for last casted for a the best part was still going. the best part was Matt Pyatt talking about Tennessee football, so that can make you feel good. <laughs> oh God! Like he's, it can he's, be worse. <laughs> he's saying they're good. It can be a lot worse. Sorry. All right, the next one up on our list. Crazy ass Pine Lake pontoon lady. <laughs> so, real sh last cast, last short, sweet. <laughs> figured, yeah. um, get your phone out when someone is doing something ridiculous and dangerous, and record them because otherwise DNR cannot press charges. They won't help you very much. Um, I think we need to hear the story. 
We don't have enough time for the story. Well, we I had a woman. Time. I can reset this clock. <laughs> yeah, if you want. We got all the time in the world. I mean, we're 15 minutes over, but I had a uh, <laughs> woman in a pontoon boat who got very upset that I had thrown my Texas rigged Sanko over her tube that she had floating in the middle of the lake, and proceeded to do laps around me in her pontoon. So yeah, moral story: just get your phone out and uh, get some video, get some pictures because they they'll help you. They're more than happy to help you, but you have to have proof. Those giant triple treble jerk baits are for yeah got them yeah they're ready all right and since we are running a little late on time i'm going to jump past a couple of these last topics here well we'll skip past one but we're going to go best lake from 2019 top water let's hear it from each of you guys what was your favorite one green favorite or like best finish or favorite favorite lake uh probably uh, wabasis was would rank high with me just because uh, our dad was out there. My son was out there. We we camped out at the campground. It was Piat came out and hung out with us at the campground. And uh, other than that tornado that went through there and about yeah. devastated the campground, it right. was it was a good time. So yeah, yeah Wabasis was probably my favorite campground or favorite lake on the yep. schedule. I think to choose just something different. I had a great time at Wabasis. I think choose one different. I think I would have to go with uh, Jordan Lake. I'm glad it's on the schedule again. Um, that was my first like good finish. I don't, I don't think it was my first good finish, but good finish like that I really just felt confident in. And uh, I ended up taking second at that one, got big bass. It was really close between uh, me and Dave Mull. And I don't know, I just felt good about my game plan and everything kind of worked out. And it was absolutely gorgeous night. I just really enjoyed that one. And then we went to a place with amazing food afterwards and really enjoyed that one. So, all right. And continuing on. What, what about you? What oh, was, what green Lake. Yeah, green. He said yep. it first. He yeah, didn't yep. say anything else. <laughs> of course, Andy would chime in with Stearns Bayou. Uh, Andy, first time out in a kayak on a, or for a kayak tournament and wins the event on Stearns Bayou with his frog. I think he only threw a frog that night, kicked everybody's ass that night. Yeah. So, good job, Andy. Yep, that was a good one. That was fun. <laughs> that was really cool, actually, to see him win. I, I, it was pretty exciting. <laughs> All right, so we are going to just give a quick little preview of next week. We've got uh, Steve Espen coming on. Excited to have Steve Espen joining us next week with uh, Pure Fishing. Yep. Um, wealth of knowledge about the industry. Um, He's a consummate professional, so I'm excited to have him in here and chat with him next week. Came in third or fourth at the Grand River Tournament just a couple days ago. Third? So, yeah, yeah, third. Third so, place. Yep, he's actually done well in all the top water tournaments he's come out to. So Steve Essen <laughs> is going to be with us next week. We'll probably play last cast again. We'll have some more lake releases. I believe we are going to have the first lakes in the Tri-Cities division, which is the one around Saginaw. So uh, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to throw out our closing graphic. If anybody's got questions or anything like that, stay tuned. We'll answer those, and then we're going to have a – uh, probably run through comments and that kind of stuff, but we'll be on for a couple more minutes if uh, anybody's got any questions. All right, we were about to end this, but I get this message from Paya that says, I, first I say, anybody got any questions, post them up. The only one I get is Matt Pyatt asking if I showered today. Matt, does it look like I didn't shower today? I know I haven't shaved in like three weeks, but... Catch, catch board orders yeah, uh, from Diesel. Yeah, absolutely. I've got, um, I've got two people on the catch board order. I place one every couple months, it seems like, uh, but... Catchboard, uh, they work with us over there. They're great guys. They've worked with us to do custom ones, so we get a little bit of a break on them. They all come to my house, and you guys can pick them up, or I'll meet you on them. Um, you, Pyatt, you can't smell me from here. Do I, do I have a stank. Do I have a stank, Anderson? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but no, yeah, catchboard orders, we can definitely get them. Get them into me if anybody wants one. Uh, we're going to be doing one in the uh, next couple weeks here. Um, and uh, like I said, I think I got two people. We're going to order just a couple generic topwater ones, but you can get your name on them. You can get topwater logo. You can get MKT logo. 
Um, multiple color options, multiple yep. sizes to choose from. So we've um, actually got mainstream logo and we have water dog logo. So if you're so, interested in having one of those. Yeah, a water dog logo, a MKT logo, mainstream logo, and the top water logos all available on the uh, board faces of your catch boards now. Uh, and like I said, multiple colors to choose from. Um, they hook us up with a, a nice generous discount. We try to pass that on to you guys. Uh, we do not profit from any of these. We just help out with the purchasing. So, Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. We don't make anything. Um, actually, I tell everybody to pay with friends and family because if they don't, then I lose money. But True. Uh, they're a great board. We like getting them to people and it saves everybody a couple bucks because uh, you know, shipping is a big thing with them. So we can get them all here and get them to everybody. And uh, I've got no problem doing that. So if you're interested in a catch board, shoot me a message and so, we'll get it taken care of. Um, uh, Chad Watson, will there be more info about the Elite and Worlds? Yes. Uh, we've touched briefly on what the World Series of Fishing uh, is going to entail. There's a lot more information uh, about World Series of Fishing um, that we held back on purpose. Uh, we're going to wait and release that information, uh, pro honestly, probably a little bit later on into the year, uh, maybe even after the New Year's. Um, so hold on tight for World Series of Fishing, Elite Series we will get into shortly, uh, but we will definitely touch on those subjects. Yep, yeah, Elite Series, uh, I mean, at this point, you know, just to be kind of straight, Elite Series is basically Michigan Kayak Trail, yeah. so there's no sense in really duplicating what they do. Um, so that's kind of the Elite Series is uh, the Michigan Kayak Trail, and I think at some point, you know, we're hoping that um, we, we got a lot of big stuff coming in the next year. So what we've announced at this point is just kind of a, you know, it's some of the big pieces, but there's a lot of really core critical pieces in what we're doing that are all going to be released in the next year. And um, we're kind of hoping to be able to work with other series like MKT. And, and so that's going to kind of be that elite series is that next step up. As far as the worlds, absolutely, we're going to be releasing information. A lot of that is not going to come until next year is when we're going to start posting a lot about stuff about the, uh, the, the world series. Um, it's going to be something really big and it's not going to be anything really that you're going to have to, to necessarily separate your schedule or anything like that. It's not a whole no. other league, but it's something really cool uh, that we're doing. We're adding to the series, and like I said, I can't release and, anything about it yet. It, to our knowledge, it, it has never happened before. Nope. It does not exist in the kayak fishing community. Uh, it will be the first of its kind yep. uh, for this sport. Yeah. Um, so. Tune in. Uh, I know we, we've been asked uh, about the worlds quite a bit with the logo announcement uh, a few weeks ago and the graphics and stuff, uh, but we're keeping that a uh, little closed lip for now, building up even more anticipation because like I said, it it's the first of its kind. Uh, it does not exist uh, in our kayak fishing sport. Uh, so being able to bring this to our uh, friends and family in Michigan, super excited about it yep yeah it hasn't been done before it's something that we're adding on you know coming into the next year and it's one of those things that we don't want to announce things until we've got everything ready to go with it and it's something like it's like michael said that's never been done before and there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes that's going to make this possible so i don't want to go through and announce it until we have everything else there to support it but it'll definitely be coming and it's going to be one of the coolest things that uh you'll have the opportunity to do right um couple other things matt pyatt uh, can he come in next week and can he bring the trophy if you want to haul that trophy in you are more than welcome and uh, uh we opened up our studio offices here in downtown grand rapids to any of our viewers so if you are free on tuesday nights and you feel like stopping in at the office uh shoot me a message i'll send you some information on where to park and how to access the building uh, more than welcome to come hang out and uh chime in with us uh it just makes it that much more fun uh, Andy, Pied is still welcome. Or? <laughs> yeah, he can right. come in. I didn't know. Uh, any more Sunday tourneys next year? Yes, uh, actually, we have an entire Sunday trail series. Um, check our photos on the Topwater page. Um, it's titled the Sunday Topwater Trail Series. Um, I believe there's twelve yep. events next 12 year events on all the trail throughout series. The state. And who was it that asked that question? Uh, Andy. Yep, so yeah, there's 12 events throughout the state, uh, ones that are going to be close to here. I know we've got uh, one down in Kalamazoo. I don't remember what ones are right around, well, we've got uh, Cadillac. We start out in cold water, yep. and then we, I mean. We've got Cadillac, yeah. Lake Cadillac Mitchell. 
Another I will one. throw up that graphic in the chat. Real yeah, quick. while he's doing that, I'll run through some other ones. But yeah, we've got uh, 12 events going to be on Sundays. Some of them are going to be a little bit of travel, um, but I know that we do at least have two or three that are within a reasonable range of here. So. Aaron, just kind of running through the things here. It's Camp Powell Lake. Camp Powell Lake. Not Camp Bell. Camp All right, we will issue a correction. We'll post up on the page. But Campbell Lake is not happening. It's Camp Powell Lake. Uh, that's one I've heard of. So hopefully uh, you guys too have two. But that will be the one that is the eighth lake in the series. So. Matt Pyatt, wondering if there will be a return to Wabasis. There might be, but you're going to have to pay attention as we release the rest of the league series. We're going to be releasing all the rest of the league series before the end of the year. So we're going to take a two-week break around Christmas, New Year's, but we will get all of the rest of the releases. We'll be doing four. There will be one more week where we double up, but we'll get all those released throughout the end of the year. And then the beginning of next year is going to be actually focused on uh, a lot of our some really big guests that we've got coming on the show. Um, I know we've got Jeff Fader coming on. Uh, we've got A.J. McWhorter from uh, Hobies coming on and some other awesome guests. So I believe we've actually got some previous uh, KBF national champions that are going to be on board with us. So that'll be kind of our shows for next year, but we will get all of the league series out for this year. So, All right, any other questions out there that anyone's got to ask? Or we are going to call it a night because my back hurts from sitting on this stupid chair. <laughs> they improve your posture, though, Kyle. You have to sit up. I'm trying my best. If I was in a chair, I'd be like slumped over by now. So, <laughs> Well, before we take off tonight, uh, just a quick thank you to everybody that's been tuning in over the last four weeks. Uh, like I said, we are uh, new to the podcast world, so making this happen, uh, we're still figuring some things out like our audio issues and not sure why Facebook froze up earlier. Uh, so we will continue to make these corrections to keep bringing you a better broadcast. Uh, we'll make sure everybody showers. We'll make sure everybody's good to go. Uh, but this is, a, again, it's just a lot of fun for us to be able to sit up here, bring you guys new information each week in the kayak fishing uh, world, and uh, keep updating you throughout the winter. Uh, to my knowledge, all of the tournaments in the state of Michigan are pretty much wrapped up at this point. So yep. we've got between now and April uh till we can get back out there and compete again um unless you want to run down to the uh holy bass open shootout so yeah they, if you want to cruise to arkansas yep have yeah. fun and i think there is a pike tournament oh yep up. yeah absolutely yeah dave mole's got his pike tournament going on next weekend so oh, that's right yep yeah we we're gonna mention that where where's the pike tournament gonna be at i'm guessing around kalamazoo but dave mole's got a pike tournament going on they do it every year sounds like a lot of fun i would like to attend i don't know if i'll be able to make it but is that, that a awesome. kayak tournament? Kayak, yes, pike tournament. tournament, yep. Tournament. Next weekend down, I believe it's right around Kalamazoo area. They do it every year. Um, he actually works on it with uh, Matt Elliott from Mainstream. So they post it up on it. I'll, I'll get the information and post up on the page. I think it actually was shared on the Topwater page. But if you want to jump in on that tight pike tournament, that would be a lot of fun. I'd like to make it. I just think I'm a little bit burned out. So we will see if I can make it down there or not. But uh, And uh, just a couple last uh, comments. Um, have a good night. Mr. Cantwell, thanks for joining in. Uh, Mr. Pyatt, you're right. Notre Dame does suck. And I think that's about it. So Quick going to jump in. The yes. Pike Tournament is, of course, November 3rd at Marl Pond Okay. DNR Access. So November 3rd, that's a Sunday. Yep, Marl Pond's yes. uh, bayou basically off Grand or Kalamazoo River, I believe. Mm -hmm. so. Nice. All right, so there you go. Pike River fishing, that's awesome. Yep, that'll be a good time. All right, guys, thanks for, thanks for joining in. We Thank will you. see you next week with Mr. Steve Espen. Have a good night. All right.